<laughs> Just murder. <laughs> yes. Oh my oh, god. No. I was like, let's go. <laughs> Say what you want about Zack Snyder, man, but dude knows how to make action happen. This next pick, I think, is partially because of recency bias uh, that I'm picking it number one. Welcome to Backseat Directing. We talk about movies, TV shows, comics, and more. We're your hosts, Andrew and Aaron, and we post new episodes every Monday and Thursday. And on this episode, we're going over the top 10 most iconic movie scenes. A three, a two, a one, action. action that was it was I, I felt a little hesitant on the name because we've called this a bunch so of different things you end up calling it most iconic movie scene top Perfect. 10 most icon iconic Perfect. movie scenes we're gonna do a draft though oh, dang it. yeah but, <laughs> but we'll, we'll call it the top 10 and then i'll just put draft at the end per that's what i was planning on doing Okay. So like it. top 10 most iconic movie scenes and then that like line and then draft. That's, That's a what, lot of words for a time. Don't worry, we'll figure it out. I mean, <laughs> you don't like that? <laughs> so we're, if you guys can't Pe tell. It's statistically proven that numbers in the title do better. I don't know if that correlates to our channel though. <laughs> if you in the audience can't tell, we very clearly have this episode planned out perfectly oh, and, and just we'll, like all of our and episodes. what we're doing is we are going to do a draft for a team of 10 movie scenes and our goal is to pick the most iconic 10 scenes on our team that we possibly can we've done a ton of drafts on the show before if you're unfamiliar with the concept it just means aaron and i because there's only two of us today are just going to go back and forth picking scenes, trying to steal the best ones, trying to steal them from each other. We're going to flip a coin to decide who goes first, and we are going to ask friends, family, audience, anybody on earth who will interact with us to let us know which team that they like better so that me and Aaron can smugly roast each other in yes. the time in between episodes. And it's up to us to define what makes the scene iconic yeah so we're, we're not like narrowing it down to a specific genre or type of shot or whatever it can be any type of scene it could be like a fight scene it could be a an iconic line or speech or something or or just a really cool shot or the vfx was iconic in that shot like it's however we decide to defend our team as being the best team yeah we'll maybe get more like in depth with our criteria as we go along or even after all of our picks just so we keep it a little close to the belt don't want to spoil for the audience and don't want to give Aaron a sneak preview at my pick so he can steal them so mm -hmm. I'm I'm strictly going off of only John Wick movies oh yes yeah every one of my picks is actually going to be from the Pitch Perfect franchise <laughs> dang it now I have no chance of winning Seriously, <laughs> dumb. my fiance doesn't listen to our episodes but she would be annoyed to hear me say that because she kept suggesting uh, a pick from <laughs> For Pitch Perfect, then I'm not going to pick it. Gonna, oh, man. <laughs> All right. Normally, we go back and forth with a snake draft where the last person gets two. But today, since we have so many uh, picks that we're drafting on our team, we're just going to go back and forth, back and forth. So, Andrew, we're going to decide who goes first from a coin flip. Now, normally, I flip the coin, and it somehow always ends up being you going first. So you're going to flip the coin, and hopefully I get to go first today. Call it near? Yep. All right. Heads. <laughs> you're not going to like it. Oh, come on. I get to go first. Is that a double-sided tails coin? Don't, <laughs> don't even worry about it. <laughs> Should right. have inspected the coin beforehand. <laughs> All right, so I'm guessing you want to go first. I'm going to choose to go first. All right, whatever. So rounding out our iconic, or I shouldn't say rounding out, starting out, our most iconic movie scene, top 10 draft. The first movie picked is going to be... No, I am your father. Darth Vader scene from Empire Strikes Back. I think arguably the most iconic scene in movie history. It's 
something literally everybody knows. If you are a three-year-old child, you can get them to quote this scene. If you are 80 years old, you can get them to quote this scene with you. And you can say, yeah, I mean, the Mandela effect. Maybe they'll say, Luke, I am your father. <laughs> If you haven't heard, the Mandela effect is like this phenomenon where lots of people experience a shared memory that's actually different than what actually happened. In the scene, he says, no, I am your father. So this is huge, huge Tampa. This is a huge scene in cinema. It's really memorable, really fun. It stood the test of time, which is going to be, I'm trying to have be a theme for quite a few of mine going forward. We have 10 to pick, so I'll try to pick some newer, fresher scenes. But I mean, I think something that makes a movie iconic is that that factor of time and people still remembering it, people still referencing it decades later. That was a good pick. I had, it was on my list. Um, I didn't list these out in any particular order, but it was second on my list. So I thought of it really quickly. So it's definitely an iconic scene. And Mine aren't in a perfect order either. Good, I'm going on feel. Yeah, on good choice. I, this next pick I think is partially because of recency bias. Uh, that I'm picking it number one. But with that said, it's in one of the best movies ever. So it's a justifiable number one pick. Um, I'm going to pick the T-Rex scene in Jurassic Park where the banner is floating down behind the T-Rex and it's roaring. Now, there's a bunch of scenes in Jurassic Park that you could pick to be iconic, but I wanted to pick this one because we haven't talked about this scene before on the show, and we've talked about the, the long head where he sees the dinosaurs for the first time a bunch of times on the show. So I wanted to pick a different scene that, to me, just looks cooler. You know, and that's what gets me excited was seeing that T-Rex for the first time uh, kind of in the, the building of the, the zoo or if, if you will, with the banner flying down behind it. I just love the, the movement and yeah, recency bias as well. So I just watched this movie last week. If you've been watching the show for a minute, you know that I'm a huge fan of Jurassic Park. Um, I'm going to start dogging Aaron's picks early and say that I, I would have picked the scene where the T-Rex comes out for the first time in the rain. Dark, dramatic, rainy, epic, huge in scale. That'd be my preferred scene. But I think you still a, could pick it. There's kind of a lot of cool layers to that scene. I mean, the, even just thinking about the banner falling, it's like not only symbolic of the park coming down, the park, Jurassic Park itself no longer being a viable option because of everything that's happened, but also kind of a symbol of like the statement made earlier by Ian Malcolm's character or by the character Ian Malcolm saying that life finds a way, it's like life has perforated, broken its way out of this park and demolished this park. Like it's a, a kind of interesting. Like uh, the shot says a lot, and I think Spielberg is brilliant. I, I love that movie, so it's a good pick for sure. What do you got for your second one? I think since it's still on the board, I'm gonna go for some additional uh, mass audience appeal, and for my second pick, I'm gonna take Cap wielding Mjolnir. I knew it! I'm going to take the scene from Avengers Endgame where Cap picks up Mjolnir, fights Thanos. Uh, it's, it's more recent. It's going against the grain of what I originally said of picking scenes that stood the test of time because this is 2019. But this is going to be a scene that stands the test of time. If one thing's for sure, I mean, this had audiences rocketing out of their seats, everybody screaming, cheering. I don't think this pick needs any defending. Um, I wish, I wish I could go back and watch this for the first time. If I could pick a short list of scenes I'd want to watch again for the first time in theaters, this would be oh, near the yeah, top. For sure. That scene was epic, uh, which iconic, epic, I think can kind of be interchangeable in this instance. Um, I would love to watch that movie again for the first time. That was top five movie theater experience for sure. Everyone's, I don't know about you, but in my theater that we were watching and everyone's like screaming and cheering. They're like, oh my gosh, you know, like it was pretty cool to, to see that happen. Um, that was a, that was a good pick. Um, man, there's, there's so many picks so many what do i want to go with you picked like a fight scene do i want to pick a fight scene now too um let me see here i'm gonna go okay this one looks good <laughs> this is how like in depth our research was for this draft is i'm just going down my <laughs> list i'm like oh this one feels good right feels now right um i'm gonna go with 
arguably Zach's favorite scene ever uh, in honor of him. And that's going to be Batman versus Superman, uh, the warehouse fight scene. You know, um, that one's just a heavy hitter. You know, oh, yeah. that one was cool. It was brutal. It was dark. It showed how smart uh, Batman is, you know, like uh, shooting the hole and then coming from the, the opposite direction, you know, like that was well choreographed, well shot. One of, if not the only good thing about BVS. <laughs> <laughs> the only good thing might be going a little far, but the sentiment, yeah. I understand the sentiment. Yeah. Um, I Say what you want about Zack Snyder, man, but dude knows how to make action happen 300 batman versus superman i mean he really knows how to work the camera he knows how to work the action watchmen you know he's he's good with it like mm -hmm. i i really think he's made some of the coolest action sequences of the 21st century yeah i agree so, moving on to my third pick got a couple of really good choices um some tough choices. I'm, I gotta try and take the stuff off the board first that I think you might pick and save the stuff that might be more personal for the, the second half of my list mm -hmm. after five. So mm -hmm. for my third pick for now, I'm gonna stick with- And forever. I mean, you can't just change it. For now and forever, mm -hmm. I'm gonna stick with your wizard Harry from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Nice. The, you know, I I, I want to say just like there's a love of a generation behind this line. Like all of us growing up with Harry Potter, you know, back in the day before we knew that J.K. Rowling was transphobe, back when it was still pure and magical. Yeah, this is a great picture. <laughs> Sorry. I still feel like I'm just going to breeze past that. <laughs> it killed me. Um, no, it's it's really like... Um, so great that they're already going to remake it. <laughs> oh, it's so great that literally like the dust hasn't even settled on Deathly Hollows Part 2. And they're just... How many different ways can we cash grab this franchise? Yeah. The, I, and I'm pretty sure J.K. Rowling has like a big role in this show, right? That's coming out. I, I don't really understand it too well. No, I, from what I've heard, that like none of the original cast the wanted to come back because she was involved. Oh, really? I don't know if that's true or not, but well, I'd like it to be true. I saw it on TikTok. It's got to be true. I'll have to do an episode of Harry Potter news. <laughs> but I think that this, I mean, just this line, the magical way the actor for Hagrid delivers it, it had all of us as young kids believing that maybe somebody would show up to our door and tell us we're a wizard and like that we're special and we're... Oh, Andrew, you're special. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just move on to the next pick. Now, I, I think this is, a, this is such a cool scene, though. It's so, it's so indicative of the magic in the entire franchise of that, like, you know that something can just come up and carry you away into like a whole new world, like a simple, just it's all packed into that one line from Hagrid. Yeah. Did you, um, kind of going on a tangent here. Did you see that HBO max is switching to just the name max? max? Yeah. I mean, why would you do that? How many rebrands can you have? Yeah. And like HBO is one of the most, like, I don't know, the highest class of streaming totally services, been, yeah. you know, like it always has been, you know, it's like, Oh, I'm watching this show on HBO. And it's like, well, I can't afford HBO. <laughs> it's crazy because they're producing succession and Barry and the last of us and some of the and house of dragons and rings of power. And some of the, you know, most beloved television content, some of the most, what people are are touting as the most well-produced television content out and they just don't seem to have it together in terms of branding you would think that would be the place where you start and then you finish with the peak content but they yeah. have the peak con they have a library of amazing movies the best library of movies of any streaming service did you hear that uh, disney plus is just gonna go by plus that's stupid I'm just kidding. I, I'm just kidding. I, 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 did, I did, hadn't heard that, so I was just going to take my hard stance on it. Paramount is also just mount. <laughs> Netflix is just flicks, which I guess kind of makes was, sense, at right? Least that like, one would work. Yeah. Hulu's going to be just Lou. Amazon is, I guess, just Zon. Prime. <laughs> just or just video. Prime. Yeah, Prime Video. Video. All right. Um, I feel like I'm kind of mirroring your picks and I, I kind of like this strategy, uh, you know, like kind of you pick one, I pick one to like kind of counteract it yeah, a little bit. Writing. What? 
yeah, Sorry. coattail riding. Um, so in that coattail riding, as you will, I'm going to pick a movie or a scene that is a line as well. Um, so I'm going to go with, I will find you and I will kill you from Taken. God, it hurts how much I love that scene. <laughs> Can't even dog it. Can't say a bad word about it. <laughs> I don't have... I don't have very much money, but what I do have is a very particular set of skills. Yeah. Skills I've obtained over a long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. Now, if you let my daughter go, I'll let go of this. I won't search for you. But if you don't, I will find you. And I will kill you. Good luck. <laughs> it's so freaking good. It's so good. Dude, I want to rewatch this movie. It's been way too long. I remember the first time watching it, I was like, this is probably the best movie ever. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's the best movie so ever. So cool. Yeah, Liam Neeson. I'm, Dude, what? talk about line delivery, right? Like, he just knocks that line out of the park. You no, know, like, yeah, he delivers it so well. I will find so, you and I will kill you. It's yeah, so he's good. So scary. And then when he finds him, I told you I'd find you. Yes. Oh my oh, God. No. I was like, let's. Go! It's so it's so freaking good. Yeah. I'm equally as scared of Liam Neeson and Taken as I am of like primetime Tom Hardy in Dark Knight Rises <laughs> when like one is like Jack prime of his life and the other and one like is like elderly. 60 year old man, yeah. <laughs> Why is he like just as intimidated? So much in the voice. Yeah, man. He's he can deliver a line, that's for sure. Um Yeah, I love that movie. I, I love that scene. All right. You're up. Oh, it's so tough not just like having them having them on, on off rip. Um, so I got so many. I I'm I'm just I'm gonna keep stacking franchises, stacking franchises, building up my repertoire. Um, for my fourth pick, I'm going to choose the Boulder Escape from the opening of Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Mm. That I mean, it's so freaking iconic. And we're talking about standing the test of time, like that's another one. I mean. Everybody knows there, it's been parodied even multiple times. The kind of that that scene where he lightly grabs the uh, the treasure and replaces yep. it with the sack of dirt. It's it, it's like so many aspects of thought. Little as, it's the Spielberg effect. These little aspects that make it special. Like he pours just a little bit of dirt out. He's like, oh, it's like I gotta get just the right weight. Just so careful. And then he like, carefully moves it over, breathes a sigh of relief. <laughs> and then as he as he goes to walk away, it turns back and it's. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got to book it for the entrance and like Indy's attachment to his hat, like going back to the last second to snag his hat. It's the little details, the Spielberg effect, man. It, it's, it, it feels like so much fun and it's life or death stakes, but it feels like fun the whole time. You're just mm -hmm. dun, 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 like, you're, you're never like really scared. You're just having a good time. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, that's what I feel good like pick. Ready Player One, which I only watched for the first time recently. I haven't seen it yet. It's a lot of fun. It's another thing that's on Max. <laughs> but it's it's a lot of fun and it's just like the the stakes are big. There's a lot in the world that's at stake, but it's it's just, just a fun. fun movie, yeah. Yeah, I love that feeling and it, it's cool. I love watching the Spielberg movies, dude. I love those just fun movies. I feel like you kind of either love them or hate them. Yeah. You know, there's no in between for I don't you like for those type of movies. I don't like cheesiness. Yeah. I just watched a movie on Apple TV called Ghosted and it was super cheesy. Really? Super cheesy. With uh, Chris Evans. Genuinely and bad. One star. You didn't like it? One star. Oh, man. I was going to try to find someone because uh, i don't have uh, apple or whatever so i was going to try to find someone to so i can watch it i, I really I like both of those actors i won't give you apple tv logins to protect you from watching that movie <laughs> <laughs> there is like there is there is some cool cameos like the villain turns out to be adrian brody and there's mm. some, there's some cool like Spoiler. i don't know how they got the people they got like the, it's, it's clearly Dang. like a hallmark movie it's it's bad bad Dang. Yikes. All right. Well, let's move on to something that's a little bit better, shall we? Um, there's so many picks still on the board. I think this one I just have to go with. It's actually on display over my shoulder right now. So, I mean, I have to pick it, you know, out of respect. So I'm going to pick Into the Spider-Verse Leap of Faith, where he's jumping off the building. Not only is this, this whole movie is just iconic right but this scene in particular the way that they scaled the buildings like in the model of how they animated this 
uh, shot where he's jumping off the top of the roof. The buildings are like miles tall uh, huh. in the scale. Miles. Yeah. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> it's funny. Go on. Go, funny. Go, on, go on. But like, that's really cool to like change the perspective of something that would already be a unique perspective because it's not very often we get to see that perspective but just to have that creativity you know and then just the little details where like he's still kind of holding on to the building a little bit so like the glass breaks off as he jumps and then the soundtrack i mean come on let's go um man i want to watch this movie right now like can we take a break <laughs> i've been watching so many new movies and i just have i have the urge to rewatch movies but i'm trying to like expand my repertoire yeah i've been rewatching a lot of movies lately especially like when i'm working out because i've been having to work out at the house a little more so i've watched a lot of uh like captain america movies and stuff but into the spider verse isn't streaming on anything right now so the only way to watch it would be like to purchase it so that's annoying. frustrating. So, so annoying. But Spider-Man did come on to uh, Disney Plus. Yes. The first got. three and then The Amazing Spider-Man. And then The Amazing Spider-Man 1 and Spider-Man Homecoming. Like a weird, not all the Spider-Man movies, but we got some of them kind of yeah. brag. Right. Yeah, weird. Um, okay, Andrew, going on to your fifth pick here. I'm going to go for an iconic scene in movie history. Uh, something that's used in memes, it's used referenced all the time. It's kind of just like, it's almost like a euphemism in American culture, just a phrase. Uh, I'm going to go with the red pill versus blue pill scene from the matrix. Uh, nice. just like the concept of waking up from the matrix, the concept of, uh, choosing to live blissfully in ignorance or to wake up to reality. And I think that there's a lot of layers to this movie that's like an action movie upon first viewing uh, especially if you're watching it as a young kid there's a lot of layers to it especially in this decision and it's just a really really cool well executed concept where neo decides to wake up and face his destiny face reality you know he could continue to live in the program it's much more enjoyable than living in uh what would you call it the apocalypse but he he makes the choice to wake up and face reality. So this is a, a really cool scene. They're revolutionary special effects that they did with the mirror at the time. You know, people hadn't done stuff quite like that. And I think even if some parts of the matrix look dated, they, you have to, we have to remember how revolutionary they were for the time for like 2000 and just, you know, the, the strides that they made when they made that movie with things like bullet time. It's such a cool movie. I don't know what to pick next. <laughs> that is a, a good pick. And that's definitely something I know is like close to your heart. So I know you're kind of getting into your emotional picks now. Yeah. I don't know if you're going to continue in that direction or not. So I, I feel like this is a good bridge to my emotional picks yeah. because this is something that I feel like a lot of people recognize as an iconic scene. Yeah. When you show the picture of Morpheus holding the red and blue pill, like that's around the world. That's like a Facebook meme for like 40 year old moms, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, let me look through my list here. Um, man, I don't know where I want to go. I think this scene, ah, man, I'm thinking here. I think I'll go with something from a movie I know you really like. And I think... Uh, Sometimes picking a choice that will make your your opponent uh, appreciate your team is a good way to go sometimes. So hopefully you like this pick. And if you don't, then I guess that defeats the whole point of picking it. Get but nervous, I do folks. think it's really cool. Get nervous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You are not. The Wolf of Wall Street. The chest bump or thump <laughs> from Matthew McConaughey. Come on. Dude, that's so cool. The fact that it was improvised. I love it when actors just make things up and the other actors or actresses in the scene just have to like go with it and it ends up making the cut and ends up being something that's like rememberable of that movie. Dude, I was literally biting my tongue so hard to not immediately say, you know, he improvised that scene, right? I was like, I was like, just give him like five more seconds. He'll probably say it. It's his scene. But like, the like inner like 
movie nerd in me like want to yeah. jump on that mind so fast that is a great scene well, and matthew mcconaughey is in that movie for such a small amount of time just like really john is. bernthal too yeah i like john bernthal's both of their role in it a lot mm -hmm. no matter how small but yeah i just surprised by how little screen time they actually got yeah jonah hill's great it's a very good movie yeah it's very well acted for sure definitely um all right so i have five you have five so we're halfway through uh, where are you going for six? Well, before I get to my six picks, halfway through is as fitting a point as any for me to go ahead and thank the audience. Um, I want to just say thank you to everyone who has listened this far. We really appreciate you guys. Uh, if you have the time, we really appreciate um, anyone who would go over to our YouTube page and subscribe. We're trying to build that page up, grow our listenership. So feel free to share us with friends and family. It means a lot to us. And again, thank you so much. And back to our episode. Andrew? for your sixth pick. Now, you know, as we go further along, the picks get harder and harder to narrow down. I'm gonna go with a more emotional pick for me. I, For my sixth pick, I'm going to take the emotional park bench scene from Good Will Hunting, mm. where, uh, you know, Sean, the character played by uh, Robin Williams, kind of opens up to Will, played by Matt Damon, and talks to him about how he finally got a good night's rest when he remembered that no matter what things this punk kid might have said to him to get into his head he hasn't really experienced all the things that he's read about he's not will's not really a fully formed human yet and we get such a peek into both of their souls in this scene through not only sean's analysis but sean's analysis tells us a lot about sean here too so we get so much information and i just cry every time i watch this scene when he's like you've never held your friend in your arms since he's died you've never like looked at the doctor in the eyes and they realized that visiting hours didn't apply to you like the connection that he must have had with his wife is something that we all can kind of relate to on some level with how much each of us has a loved one in our life that we care about that much so it kind of like really touches you it makes you it, it makes tears start welling up such a good scene dude it's i i just like to look it up on youtube and watch it apart from the whole movie that's a good pick definitely a good pick when are we going to do a full episode on that movie we both really like it a lot. Any day. Um, movie. Yeah. I, I want to rewatch it before we do it. So it's like really fresh. Um, okay. Um, you know, when you're doing a draft like this, you know, it's, it's all about timing and knowing when to, to pick something or, you know, is it all about family? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, that was such a cute little laugh you did. You're like, <laughs> Yeah, people just, who are just listening he like turned his head to the side like it was it's like just i was like a, like i was a quarterback and he was like a cheerleaders <laughs> just the way family makes me feel okay and <laughs> man, i have this segue all right, all right you were saying um that it's all about yeah, timing timing um but now it's all about family so <laughs> what better place to hang out with family than inside of a church Right. So I'm going to pick the church fight scene from the Kingsman. <laughs> Just murder. Just straight death and murder. As I was saying, Andrew, it's all about timing. You picked a very emotional pick. So I could either like you know, ride your coattail, as you said earlier, and pick another emotional you're pick. Def hey, you're but I had to change the mood, you know? You're off the reservation, dude. You're off. <laughs> but anyways, in all seriousness, this scene is awesome. It's a one take, which just means that, like, there's no, like, super visible cuts of the camera. It's just kind of flowing through. The action's, like, uh, above, you know? It's, like, it's taken up a notch, you know? It's definitely dramatic um have you seen the news for extraction 2 i think the russo siblings said there's like a 16 minute oneer or something and yeah it's probably just straight action did you see the scene that they released for... the, i might have showed it to you with the riot shield from extraction 2 mm -mm. Ooh, ooh, baby. <laughs> yeah, if you're listening check out that that scene. they released a clip from extraction 2 have you seen extraction yeah did you like it? I haven't seen it. Um, it's all right, like in terms of plot, it's yeah. like mid, but it, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's just Chris Hemsworth kicking ass for like two hours. 
it's what, like you, it's it. what you expect. I like it. It's what yeah. you expect going in. Yeah. That's kind of why I haven't watched it. Because I haven't been in the mood for like... Just nonsense action. Yeah. It's like a John Wick movie, but like anything after the first John Wick movie. It's not super unique. <laughs> <laughs> Gotcha. <laughs> I know yeah. Exa- yeah. yeah. I know That's exactly, exactly what you're talking about. Speaking my language. <laughs> All right. You want to get back into my seventh pick? Yes. Um, I can't believe that I I let this one get this far. For my seventh pick in the draft, I'm going to pick Julius's sermon from Pulp Fiction. Just everything about that scene. I mean, everything leading up to it. Say one again. Say one again. What, is, what does Marcellus Wallace look like to you? What does, does he look does like? Does he look like a bitch? <laughs> See, the whole scene is so good. And then when he gets to the actual speech, like there's so many small details in there as well. You can see uh, Vincent Vega in the background. When uh, Julius starts to get ramped up on his speech, Vincent Vega kind of like takes his gun out of his pocket, just holds it uh, kind of at his midsection. You, you know that he's done this, like he's been through this scenario before. They're experienced, you know, hit man. They're, he's ready. He's, he's like, all right, he's getting into his speech. I get my gun out. I'll get ready. You, there's these little details that you know that they've worked together. They've got a partnership. They've got existing relationship. They've got a shorthand together. And then the speech itself, it's it's like paraphrased from the Bible, from what I understand. It's the, a lot of people thought it was a real uh, passage, but it was changed. And just the delivery. Oh my God, Samuel L. Jackson's best line de- delivery in his entire career, in my opinion, which is saying something just because he's been in so many, so many movies. things and so many great movies. By the way, he's in Jurassic Park. Like, yes, people will often forget that. But the 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 Julius sermon is just ah, oh, it's it's so good. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. <laughs> It's it slaps. I mean, there's nothing else to be said. Going back to Samuel L. Jackson being in like everything. If you had to pick like one actor or actress where they're the only whatever movies they're in are the only movies left. You have to pick him. I mean, he's in so many things. If you want to do a sidebar, I've seen that. I've seen a video online talking about that. If I want to do a sidebar, excluding Samuel L. Jackson, then who are you going to pick? Hmm. I don't know. I wasn't prepared for this. <laughs> <laughs> you want to pick somebody prolific, but who's in good stuff? Because right. Sam L's not just prolific. He's he's in crazy good movies. I mean, he's yeah. in Snakes on a Plane. He's in every, you got every. Oh, Aven- we're talking about good not, movies. Not here. every Avengers movie, but a lot of Avengers movies. Yeah, Are you, Star re- Wars. you roasting Snakes on a Plane? <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars. Star Wars movies, dude. He's prequels. Yeah. Yeah. All three of the. He's done so much. Like, and it's. Not stuff to shake your head at is the crazy thing is how good the quality of it. He's in Menace of Society. He's in so many good movies. Yes. Um, okay. My next pick. And Kingsman, which you already picked. Boom. He's in uh, two of my movies. You yep. can't You can't pick without picking Sam L. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me look here. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. I'm going to pick... You know, because it's all about timing. An emotional scene. You know, now that we've gotten away from emotion. I'm <laughs> pick uh, Carl and Ellie's life recap in the movie Up. Dang, animated scene. Boys throwing down the animated scenes. Oh, man. I don't even want to rewatch this scene because, like, I'll, I'll cry. We, like, if, if we watch this movie, Sierra hardcore skips the scene. My fiance, Sierra, she's like, she's not joking. She, she will fist fight somebody to skip the scene. She's oh, not I watching because it. it's too emotional. Yes. And it's like, it's a kid's movie, man. It's for kids. And I'm over here crying, watching this movie, you know, like whenever I've said this before a bunch of times, whenever it's like a spouse or something and like I can't help but put myself in that situation so I feel those emotions as if it's me going through that you know and just seeing them grow up as kids and then young adults into adults into old age like oh it's just so emotional and it's in such a good movie too which makes it even better honestly it's really is like so sad it's like <laughs> it's uh it's just pure tears like you gotta have a heart of stone to- but at the same time it's it's happy right that they got to spend all this time together and it seemed like they had a wonderful life together it reminds us of like how fleeting time is like in the blink of an eye you you know you me sierra brooke we're gonna be elderly yeah like it reminds us like that we've got to treasure this time that we do have and just that it ultimately comes to an end like how is 
Pixar going to start off a kids movie reminding us all of that. It's not okay. I know. There should be rules on this stuff for <laughs> real. You get like a, an epilepsy warning. There should be like a, this is going to give you an existential crisis warning. <laughs> Exactly. I agree. We need that. Uh, they have no right doing that to us. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. It's, it's not great. prepared. It's a great scene. You know, I'm prepared for like real life things like when it's rated R, you know, like there's no rules yeah. in rated R. But in this like little kids movie, like, honestly, come on, you can't be hitting me. Rated like R that. for emotional damage. Yeah, it's for up. sure. <laughs> All right. We're on pick number eight, Andrew. All right. For my number eight pick, I'm going to go with the heist in the opening to the dark knight which mm. speaking of this pick i think we should do a separate pick for movie openings we should do a draft of movie openings potentially with a guest but uh if i had to narrow this down to a scene you know if this is kind of what i was thinking about the difference between a scene and a sequence this is a long pick for a scene the whole opening it's like 10 15 minutes so mm -hmm. I, th I think it's like 10 12 minutes so if i were to pick one section of it i would i'd obviously pick uh the reveal of the joker talking to that last goon that kind of holds all the meat and potatoes makes of this you scene. stranger uh, and just he's like he's like i know what you're gonna do you're gonna kill me no i kill the bus driver <laughs> but like it that that segment of that scene shows us the joker's whole plan you know that they're all killing each other in order the second to last guy's about to be onto it but he gets He's there. killed by the yeah. bus driver and then the joker ultimately planned everything so perfectly unveils himself unveils not only the fact that he planned it perfectly but that he stepped in you know two toes down into his own job two toes down i don't know if that's a saying <laughs> i have no uh, idea ten toes down <laughs> yeah you kind of lost, lost me there he stepped he stepped into <laughs> into like the job itself you know he didn't just plan yeah. the job like they said at the beginning with shoes on yeah of course of course i mean not just his toes he's a psycho but he's not dumb like he's <laughs> got but, tech feet but they said at the beginning they're like he who's the joker guy gets to take a cut and he's just not even showing up he he showed up there he showed and he showed how crazy he is risking his own life wasn't you know, that him in the beginning having the mask down by his hand yes so he's just standing out there in the street wearing you know full makeup. makeup gotham's a crazy place you know there might be street clowns i don't but know they, they picked him up when they've been like hey like you kind of look like a joker he kind of like it's not it's not super clear like the angle on his face and he's oh, covering yeah. himself up as he's the getting sun, into the car. The sun, he was probably like that like <laughs> by the sun. So it was like he couldn't see they couldn't see his they face. They didn't know that what well. the Joker looked like anyway. They just had the rumors that he paints right. his face with the war paint. So Yeah, that's that should kind of be a telling enough that they saw it, but it's kinda of like a coincidence, you know. Like, <laughs> what are the odds? <laughs> but no, that super cool opening. Um It's iconic. It's yeah. I mean I think arguably I actually just watched it yesterday i think it's arguably like the best single movie opening it's the best movie heist in my opinion uh, maybe uh, if you maybe. catch that audience that sound was uh. <laughs> why are you like the sounds that are coming out of me on all these like sounds <laughs> i'm not doing anything different than normal man like you're i feel like you're attacking me here <laughs> for no reason we're just having a friendly what was that sound <laughs> We should make like a mashup of like all these sounds from this episode and make that like the intro or something. Like we'll uh, do a um like a dubstep remix. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um I'm gonna go with another fight scene here because they're just cool. You know? I'm gonna go with something that's been referenced on this podcast a bunch. I'm gonna go with the Mission Impossible Fallout loading the muscles. You know, Henry Cavill pumping those elbows. You know, we, we made a video and we actually recreated that in uh, one of our videos before. Like, when you want to get hyped, you watch that scene, you know. Um, but in addition to just him, like, doing something on accident, you know, like he wasn't even planning on doing that. He just did it one take and then the director and then he did the next take and didn't do it. And the director was like, hey, like, why didn't you do that thing? And he's like, what thing? It's like the thing with your arms. And he's like, oh, uh, I don't know. I just felt it was weird. And it's like, no, do it again. So then he kept doing it, you know, but outside of all of that, the fight scene in general throughout the whole bathroom was super cool. You know, um, Tom Cruise is a beast. Uh, you can't argue that he's one of the greatest actors out there um, in terms of commitment, 
but then also his acting ability. I think he's a great actor as well. Um, I think he has a great filmography. Yeah, definitely. He'd be another like good actor like Samuel Jackson to pick to like keep all their movies around. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's, he's in a bunch got, of like, stuff. Seven Mission Impossible movies. So yeah, and all of them are better and better and better the further they go on. And then except for like two. Yeah, but I mean that's like so long. Ago, no one remembers it. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't count. Hard, <laughs> and then the, you'd you'd also have Top Gun Maverick, and that movie was that movie slaps. You know, I love that movie. I, I actually know. got my wife to watch it the other day, and she really liked it. And she never likes any movie. So yeah. Minority Report, Vanilla Sky, Rain Man, <laughs> yeah, McGuire. You have a lot of movies. A lot yeah, of good, a lot of good movies. All right, Andrew. Ninth pick, a few, a few good men, right? That one, the court, the courtroom one, um, the firm. Yeah, there's a lot of movies. So my ninth pick, really getting down to the wire here. For my ninth pick, I'm gonna go with Run Forest, the nice. scene in Forrest Gump when uh, Tom Hanks' character, the titular character of the movie, breaks free from his leg braces and whoosh, run like the wind. I, I was running, dude. That that uh. That scene's that scene's good. <laughs> Those kids are throwing some rocks at him, and they smack the one rock smacks him so hard in the face. It seems then like. he feel it. Just, and he, it's he, the like, the speed force protected him. <laughs> he's that kid. <laughs> Full circle. <laughs> Full circle back to the speed force. So anyway, the kid smacks him in the head with a rock like crazy hard, and Forrest turns around, and Jenny's like yelling at him to run go these first of all i don't know why these kids didn't just run down and grab them at first but what they do is they go and they're like oh quick get our bikes and while they're gathering their bikes forrest starts you know kind of galloping like, yeah kind of like not very majestic run with the braces fully locked out straight you know obviously can't run great with your legs completely straight no bend at the knees so as he gets going they have this cool effect, which Force Gumps actually is. Zemeckis did great with special effects in that movie, and it's so much that people don't even necessarily notice. Mm -hmm. I mean, Lieutenant Dan, he, the actor has both his legs and it's special effects the entire time. So special effects in that movie are great, but they have this effect where you can see the ping, ping, and like the pins and bolts popping off the braces, and he's literally just running, breaking free of them until they snap off, and then he like goes, they, they do this very simple but effective camera trick where they, he runs past the camera and then they turn to the right and clearly he's now running, run off to the side out of view and the second actor off in the distance is running. So they, this is very simple effect. It's very effective where now that actor's gone. They turn to the side and he's way off in the distance with the, you know, smoke burrowing behind him. And it's so iconic. You know, everyone's, when, when somebody run, breaks, Forrest, exactly, run. when somebody breaks out into a sprint, all of us for dec for decades since this movie came out have I been bet going. you a bunch of kids still say that but have no idea what it's from. Honestly, this movie came out in nineteen ninety four. Those kids probably have definitely not seen it. <laughs> and we're still going, run forest, yeah. run forest. So many iconic lines in the movie, but that's arguably the biggest one. And that yeah. scene is just so there's it's so cool. He breaks free of the braces and is running lightning fast. Definitely. That was a good pick. I'm gonna talk about it or I'm gonna pick another pick that you can't really talk about. So I'm kind of breaking rules here because the first rule is that you don't talk about Fight Club, you know. Respect. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm kind of surprised that you didn't pick this one. Um, I know this is one of your favorite movies, uh, and it's still on the board here. But this scene is iconic for that line. But also, whenever someone wants to get in shape. They say, hey, I want to look like Brad Pitt from Fight Club. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I watched an interview with an actor. I, who was it? Um, I think some comedian or whatever. He was getting in shape for a movie role. And he went to a celebrity trainer. And he's like, hey, I want to look like. And that guy cut him off and was like, Brad Pitt from Fight Club. And he's like, yeah, <laughs> how'd you know that? <laughs> you know? Uh, so, I mean... It's the it's the creation in some ways. I don't I don't know if it's the earliest, but it's kind of like the biggest best known example of like that um, that Greek god body that people want. You know, mm -hmm. that, like I don't necessarily want to be strong. I don't necessarily want to be quick, but I want to look, look like, like a Greek Brad god. Did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he kind of embodied that for a while. Yeah, definitely. Which which scene are you picking? The explanation of the rules. Yeah. Rule number one. Don't talk about Fight Club. Well, number two, 
don't talk about Fight Club. Such <laughs> a great movie. I love it so yes. much. I'm uh, I'm really heavily debating my my number ten pick because um, I've got two movies on the line. One's more iconic, and one I like more. Mm. Mm. I'm gonna go with what I like more. Okay. And then afterwards, I'll tell you what was the iconic one I was debating. Sure. So the one that I like that I'm gonna pick for my tenth spot on my team is what's in the box what's in the box <laughs> from seven what's in the box uh, another back-to-back brad pitt choice the the climactic scene of this movie where kevin spacey's character um has spoiler alert spoiler alert everybody here's a chance has decapitated gwyneth paltrow's character put her head in a box and delivered it to her husband, played by Brad Pitt in this movie, Detective Mills. Whew. I mean, that w- you can't. If this is the first time you're watching this movie and you haven't had it spoiled, you can't tell me that wasn't a shock. Like I'm, cl- I'm starting and closing my list with a shock. Like when Darth Vader unveiled himself to be a father, <laughs> and then like in this scene when Gwyneth Paltrow's head is in a box, also crazy shocking when you're watching this movie. It's like. They use the, we talked about it before, they use these cool handheld shots uh, on Mills, Brad Pitt's character, while the other detective played by Morgan Freeman, Somerset, and uh, Kevin Spacey's character, the villain, they both have locked off tripod shots on them, indicating that they're more in control of their emotions while Brad Pitt's just spiraling. So that creates this effect where you spiral with him as an audience member. Just you're, it's, it's kind of like you're, Like you're in an emergency situation because you're sitting there like, what is going to happen next? Is he going to shoot this guy in the head? Like you're on the edge of your seat. They create that effect really well. So this is just an iconic movie ending to me. Uh, Like one of the most iconic movie endings of all time. Was this your emotional pick or your more iconic pick? Emotional pick. I think it's fairly iconic. You know, it's, it's a pop culture thing. Yeah. There's, there's, there's been the what's in a box line is huge. Everybody Mm -hmm. knows that line. Even people who don't know what movie it's from. So I do think it's still huge, but the other one that I was going to pick, I think I'll I'll tell you in a bit, I think is a little bit more of like, ah, cinema, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Um, the, my next pick I think is more personal to me. I just think it's cool, but it's also well done. Um, it is the Captain America Winter Soldier bridge fight scene. More specifically, the knife catch uh, in the middle of the oh, fight. Man. So cool. The choreography in this movie is fantastic, especially in this scene. Uh, I just watched this movie uh, last week. Uh, and it's like the last one listed on my list here because I just watched it like after I made this list. I was like, ah, man, that's perfect. That was so cool. We talked about this scene for so long after this movie. Um, I love it. So how how do you think the knife catch compares in Shang-Chi? Um, it's pretty badass in Shang-Chi. Yeah, it's pretty cool there. I think uh, for me... The Winter Soldier was more rememberable. Fair, I think that I definitely think it's. It was, I, I think it's more memorable. Well done. The choreography well, is really sick in Shang Chi. I think yes. like that. The choreography deserves. I really like Shang Chi. The that scene movie. it takes place in, I think, um, way more. Like you said, way more memorable. I mean, the whole mm-hmm. MCU is more memorable to us at that point in time. Yeah, it's peak MCU. And like the fact that he's fighting his best friend and at that part doesn't know that it's his best friend, like that's another yeah. shock that too you know like with his mask coming off right yeah. and if you didn't read comics or know who the winter Sh- soldier was that was like a <gasps> oh yeah my goodness exactly uh so that wraps up my team andrew do you want to walk through who's on your team yes yeah, so i have okay so let me let me just say this in its entirety for uh tiktok purposes <laughs> um <Okay>. for <clears throat> my Top 10 iconic scene draft. I have No, I'm Your Father from Empire Strikes Back. Cat pick up, up Cat pick up. <laughs> that was great. Uh, gonna, we we have to keep that. It's going to play so good in the video. Yeah, we got to keep it now. We're live. Cat picks up the hammer from 
uh, Avengers Endgame, you're a wizard Harry from the Sorcerer's Stone, the Boulder Escape from Raiders of the Lost Ark, Red Pill versus Blue Pill from The Matrix, the Park Bench scene from Goodwill Hunting, Julius's Sermon from Pulp Fiction, the Heist from the Opening of the Dark Knight, Ron Forrest from Forrest Gump, and What's in the Box from the Movie Seven. Man, you have a good team. You got some rock solid iconic movies there. Uh, for mine, uh, top 10, or for my 10 uh, iconic movie scenes for our draft, I have Jurassic Park, the T Rex scene where the sign falls down behind him. Number two, I have Batman vs. Superman, the warehouse fight with Batman. Three, I have Taken, I will find you and I will kill you. Number four, Into the Spider Verse, Leap of Faith. The wolf, uh, five, the wolf of Wall Street, chest bump scene. Mm-hmm. 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 Six, Kingsman, church fight. Seven, on the emotional side. Up, Carl and Ellie's uh, life recap. Eight, Mission Impossible, Fallout, bathroom fight scene, most specifically, whenever Cavill pumps his muscles up. Nine, Fight Club, first rule. You don't talk about Fight Club, so we're going to move on to number 10, which is Captain America, Winter Soldier, the bridge fight. Yeah, your list is is pretty action heavy, but there actually is some diversity in there. I like looking back, hearing it all like back to back. I'm like, oh, you like up is in there. Like the the fight club scene is. I mean, fight is in the name, but it's that's not like an action scene. So there mm-hmm. there you you threw some diversity picks in there. You got Jurassic Park in there. So I uh, I like originally was thinking like, man, you got a lot of fight scene picks. Even the the Taken scene. Is which is from an action movie, movie is yeah. still more of a it's more of like a dramatic thriller scene the the delivery of the yeah but I do have two animated movies which you I don't, don't have, have any any animated, animated movies, movies. Um, I definitely picked this draft kind of more from what I personally think is like just really cool like that's kind of what was coming to my mind when I was thinking of these scenes you know. Um, I think both of our lists are good, but for different reasons. Yeah. You want to talk about some of the ones we were most upset we couldn't get on our teams? Because there's, yes. there's limited picks. I wanted uh, Duel of Fates and the Battle of Mustafar. Um, but as you mentioned, I had a lot of fights action. and action scenes. So the fights and action scenes I had, I do hold a little bit higher than those ones. So that's why I drafted those instead. Um, I also wanted the Dark Knight. Want to see a magic trick? Yeah, but then I picked a scene from The Dark Knight and kind of. Yep. yep. I had the Avengers, the first Avengers, the team up shot where the camera circles Ooh. around and you have all of the Avengers there. But then I picked an Avengers scene. You, you picked the first <laughs> Avengers scene, so I didn't want to pick that Which one directly. Clear, the audience wasn't a rule, but no, we yeah. do try to kind of like not pick a ton of things from the same franchise. Yeah, for this draft in particular. Just because it's more fun that way. Yeah. It forces us to be creative. Because there's so many options for this draft. Uh, that I wanted to make sure that we didn't like pick from the same movie. Yeah. Um, let's see. Spider-Man two, the train scene. I mean, that's pretty cool, right? Iconic. Like, uh, I had on here too. I don't know if it's really iconic just yet. I think maybe in 10 years it could be. Um, but Top Gun Maverick, when they're like testing the planes and stuff, like pretty much any of the plane flying in that movie, uh, the fact that they're actually in the planes. I mean, like, that's insane, right? It's a cool movie. Like, that's a cool movie. They're hitting G's. <laughs> and they're just, they're not even acting anymore. <laughs> they're surviving, you know? Uh, so I thought that was cool. Uh, Rocky training montage going up the stairs. I have the Rocky I mean, 3 photo finish on mine. Yep. I have I have Lion King, either Simba's dedication in the beginning or Mufasa's death. I mean, Mufasa's death is a big one because, like, for most of us that are our age, like, that's the first time we saw someone die, you know, and it was very emotional. Lion King's overhyped. <laughs> I know you. I know. <laughs> Whatever you say. What are some scenes that you had on your list that you didn't pick? Um, the first, the first time that the DeLorean went back in time and Back to the Future, mm. the crane kick from the original Karate Kid, the flight across the moon from E.T., uh, everybody dying at the end of The Departed, and the big one that, uh, or actually, Yippie Kaye 
the del- original delivery in Die Hard. Yep. So many things from Die Hard. I love Die Hard. We should cover that movie. Um, but the Yippie Kai at the end with Hans, where he pulls the gun out from behind his back, um, and then the the one that was the big pick that I was telling you at the end that I think is super iconic to cinema in general is Here's Johnny from the Shining. Mm, yeah. So. All right. There's a tons more. I mean, we could go all day with iconic movie scenes. I have more written down right here, but those are the ones that I wanted. I felt like I wanted to say aloud. Now, in order for this podcast to be a success, we need a winner. And in order for that to happen, we need people to vote in the comments who has the best team. So, so let us know. Hit us up. Let us know who had the best team. Argue and debate with us. Make sure to check out our episodes every Monday and Thursday. And make sure to share us with friends and family. And that's, that's a wrap. wrap.